Well, time to talk to the opposition leader, Peter Dutton. To take us there, here was the New South Wales Premier, Dominic Perrottet, on the reason behind this current energy crisis. The issue here that, that, we're, that New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland and South Australia are dealing with now has been um, the ideological war when it comes to um, uh, climate change and energy policy in this country. And that's led to a lack of private sector investment. That, that, they are the facts. That's what's occurred here that's being lost in the debate. Peter Dutton, welcome to the program. Thanks, David. So, Dominic Perrottet says we're in this energy mess because of the ideological war over climate change. Is he right? Well, I think, as Jennifer pointed out uh, before, uh, in a very sensible contribution, there's fault all around here, David. Uh, over a long period of time, people have been taking different positions, uh, including state governments, as was pointed out. Uh, we've got a huge gas supply in the north and the west of this country. In a Labor state in WA, there's the ability for uh, the certainty to be put into the energy market. Uh, we've got constraints in terms of uh, the gas pipeline bringing gas from north to south. And we've got uh, moratoriums in Victoria, for example, uh, both Liberal and Labor governments, where they haven't wanted to explore that gas. Uh, as a federal government, uh, for the coalition's part, uh, uh, yes, over a long period of time, uh, we have had, uh, I think, a, a huge investment uh, into renewables, a practical approach to, uh, to gas, to coal, Etc. We invested in something like 26,000 emission reduction policies and uh, uh, and programs, and you know we'll continue to do that. And yet here we are. I mean, yes, you did invest in the Curry Curry gas plant through Snowy Hydro. That'll come online next year. Snowy Hydro 2.0 is years away from coming online. You didn't really do anything about extending the life of coal-fired power. You certainly didn't do anything on nuclear power. Uh, you did debate a national energy guarantee, but then tore yourselves apart and brought down Malcolm Turnbull over that. So there wasn't a lot of extra supply uh, confirmed under the coalition. Well, absolutely there was, uh, David. Uh, and you would be in a dire situation had Labor been in government uh, over the last few years. As you're seeing from Chris Bowen, this argument that, uh, you know, you can just pump more renewables into the grid. That, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm not, not opposed to that. But what we've seen over the course of the last couple of weeks uh, is the fact that, you know, this is a problem of uh, at night time, David. It's not, it's not a problem occurring mm. during the daytime, which Which, which is why we need away. a capacity it's, mechanism, it's a, right? Which, which is, well, again, something course, the coalition couldn't do. No, it's, we, we were agnostic in terms of uh, the, t the technology or the energy source for it. This is the point. Uh, Labor would have turned off coal years ago. Their, their argument, Chris Bowen's argument, still is this very day to exclude gas and coal. This is an argument over the last fortnight about firming up. And as was pointed out, I mean, you basically dedicated your introduction to it this morning. The, the mechanisms are there. They were there for Angus Taylor. All of the same policy settings, all of the same ingredients were known. We knew that Ukraine was an issue. And it was a failure of Chris Bowen in his response. And the regulators, if they're saying that companies have gamed this, well, do you not think that companies were trying to game it when Angus Taylor was the minister in this space? Of course they were, but he was able to deal with it and to keep the lights on. And under, under our government, under the coalition, we reduced the price of electricity. I'd love to tell you that there's a battery that can replace a coal mine tomorrow or that we can bring on hydro uh, that could support the the rest of the country, but the, the technology is just not there, David. So you need a sensible, pragmatic discussion about it. And coal and gas will be part of the mix uh, going forward. Well, let's, as okay. Well, let, let's one have part a... of Labor says, but the other the other part says that it's not. Just to pick up on what you've said there, this has been managed, hasn't it, over the last few days? We haven't had load shedding. We haven't had blackouts. We did have load shedding during your time in office. That hasn't happened this time. Well, David, I wouldn't get too excited about the first, you know, 14, 21 days of this government. This well, you have been. You've been, you've been accusing to, Chris Bowen of mismanaging this energy crisis, not using the tools at his disposal. Yeah. Point is, he has. Well, I, I think if you look at uh, what uh, AMO and others have said, they've raised real concerns about the companies. Now, uh, the, the, the sense of, of panic that's out there from Chris Bowen at the moment wasn't there when the coalition is in government. I mean, Labor must be the most, you know... Uh, you, don't I think suppose, he's this, you don't think he's managed this history, appropriately? Right? You, don't, you don't think he's been able to manage? I, 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 I don't think... I, I think he's a bunny in the headlights. I think Madeleine King has had more common sense over the last week, but she's speaking at odds with Chris Bowen. The government's trying to speak out of both sides of their mouth. My point is that, you know, what, what's happening with 
uh, with the economy at the moment. I mean, it always we'll happens on Labor's watch. The, just on your point, the, the, the they've boat, mismanaged the this. Issue, it, always happens on, okay. it always happens on Labor's watch. You know, the, the fact is that these issues come at governments every day, David, and you've got to deal with them. And at the moment, Labor's well and truly still got their training wheels on. I, I want the best for our country, but I worry that well, Labor okay. the, the is making bad decisions at the moment. The lights have stayed on. There's been no load shedding. There was on your watch. But you mentioned AEMO and what they've been saying. The energy market operator boss appointed under the coalition uh, government. He says the last few days are a reminder that, quote, we need to make sure we're investing in renewables, firming and transmission. Do you agree? Yes, yes. So you think the government's right to be investing in transmission? I, I, I think they need to make the argument to, as to uh, the, the return on the investment and if they can uh, identify to us how quickly it's going to be rolling out and how that transmission is going to take place, where the wires will be rolled out, then that, that's for the, okay. I mean, this is, so this is for the government to, to detail. Well, let, let's have a look at what they propose. But it could be that what they're talking about takes more than a decade. And we, we can't have a situation that we've had in the last couple of weeks prevail over mm. the next couple of years. We have to okay. accept that coal and gas will be there until the technology, until the science improves uh, and then everyone's signed up to it. It's not, it's not an anti-renewable issue at all. It, the, as I said, uh, Chris Bowen and others have been telling pensioners to turn their heaters off over the last week to avoid the well, shedding that you were was. talking about. The New about. South Wales Liberal and, government was. Well, so, and, and, and to the federal government. Uh, they were telling people exactly that. Who, so, who said that so in the federal my, government? My point is that, well, my, my point is that that's happening of a night time uh, David, so this has nothing to do right. with renewables, what's uh, the debate of the last couple of weeks. Well, let me so ask you about renewables. I just think have an honest, reasonable, unemotional debate about it. OK. W what about the 43% target that is now Australia's new emissions target for 2030? Do you support it? Well, I I'm happy to see it uh, go, go much higher, David, but you've got to be realistic about what happens in firming. And, and the debate at the moment is about how do we firm up? Uh, how do we get more gas into the system? How do we uh, help... Uh, make sure that lights don't go out. And that, that is nothing to do with the renewables debate at the moment. I'm very happy for an incredible investment to continue to be made into renewables. Uh, under the coalition in 2020, you know, we had more than what Labor did in six years. And it grows and grows each year. The market's already decided that. And well, I'm fully supportive on. of it. But, but on the target, do you support but, the target, if you go the to 100, target? If, Well, I, I, we'll see what uh, the Labor Party puts forward. Well, they have. I'm happy they've for they've it to signed go. up. So do you support it? Well, let, let's, well let's, let's see what they put forward because they've got to negotiate with the Greens to get there, David. So this does have echoes of uh, Julian well, no, Gillard. No, no, no. They don't have to negotiate period. with the so, Greens. I mean, they've, they've now signed up to a target. I'm just wondering whether you support it. No, our, 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 our position is what we took to the election. We're not supporting legislation. And uh, we've been clear about that. So no, but the, the target itself. It I know you're not supporting the legislation, but the target, 43% by 2030. What's your view? Well, our, our view is that uh, we will end up... Uh, I, I mean, people haven't uh, put a figure on it, but I, I would suspect that we'll end up with something like 35% just out of what we were doing. We had the target of 26 to 28%. Uh, mm. And in terms of our own target, we'll announce that before the next election. But for uh, mm. but this right government... Now you don't support Australia's well, I'm, I'm, I'm making it very clear to the Labor Party now that we aren't supporting the legislation, which is the position that we took to the Australian people, mm. and millions of people voted for us on that basis. No, I, I know you're not supporting the legislation, but you are opposed to the target, Australia's target now, at 43% by 2030. David, I, it's, the target is an issue for the, for the government. Uh, that's, you know, some, we're not a government in exile. And my, my job is to support good policy that's in the best interest of okay. our country and to oppose bad policy. We'll look at uh, each on its merit. But uh, we've been clear at the last election as to our position, and that, that's not changing. What, you talk about policy. What about a more powerful trigger to keep more Australian gas in Australia? One that is based on price, that says gas gets too expensive, we'll pull the trigger. Would you back that? Well, I read Peter Harch's piece yesterday, which mm. uh, sounded um, pretty well informed by Chris Bowen himself, I suspect. So, again, if it's a thought bubble, uh, then let, let's see some more detail. Uh, if they're proposing something, we'll, we'll have a look at it. But okay. as I say, I'm fully I'm supportive of renewables. I, I, I want to see, though, the, the policy, the, the serious policy that's required now about how they're going to firm up. Because if they don't, uh, when we do have these shocks and if Europe goes into a bigger war than what there is at the moment, uh, we will mm. see lights go out. And that's the last thing I want to see. Let me turn to the structural budget deficit uh, that the Coalition has, has left behind. The Reserve Bank Governor expressed some concern this week over how to pay for spending commitments on disability, aged care, defence 
The Treasury Secretary has also made some comments that we can't, we can no longer rely solely on economic growth to get us out of this, this deficit situation. Um, do you accept what they're saying, that some tough decisions will have to be made? And, and are you up for some support for tough decisions? Well, we, we believe very strongly that uh, we need to have a well-managed budget. Uh, as the rating agency has pointed out recently, if Labor spends the money that they're proposing to spend at the moment, then that will affect the credit, uh, the AAA credit rating of Australia, which will make money more expensive. So that, that's a very concerning development. Uh, and yes, we, we support budget sustainability. Uh, we'll see where Labor proposes to spend money and where they propose to cut it. Uh, there's, uh, there's always a spending problem for a Labor government. And We'll hold them to account because I worry about households and businesses uh, as we go into uh, a downturn as we're, we're seeing evidence in the United States at the moment. So uh, I do fear that tough times are ahead and our job is to try and help families and businesses as best we can. On uh, just another budget matter, New South Wales you might have seen today is announcing a shared equity scheme to help first home buyers into the market. It's basically a, a mirror image of what uh, Labor took to the election, the one the Coalition said would have Anthony Albanese sitting around your kitchen table owning half your house. You worried Dominic Perrottet is going to be owning a slice as well? Well, I, I think the, the bigger issue here is uh, the supply side, David. So there are lots of ways yeah. in which you can uh, provide support. To, uh, if you're driving up prices, if builders or developers are just pocketing the money that you're giving to first home buyers, then it's a self-defeating arrangement. So. Yeah. Uh, as many studies have pointed out, uh, the, the, the demand is insatiable, which drives the prices up, particularly for younger people who want to move closer to the cities, closer to the coast. Uh, the beauty of the policy that we took to the last election was that it allowed people to use their own money in superannuation, but it compelled them to put back that money with the uplift back into their superannuation so that the compounding continued to be a benefit to them in retirement. Let's turn to national security. Uh, you said you formed the judgment the US could provide two nuclear submarines to Australia by the end of the decade. Where did you get that idea from? Well, David, uh, I think I spoke to you on uh, your program uh, in the run-up or, or perhaps even at the start of the election about the 18-month period that we're in at the moment. Uh, that was uh, the, the, the deal as part of AUKUS where we would discuss with the US and the UK what the steps forward might be. They're incredibly willing uh, partners. The United States didn't enter into this agreement for the first time since the 1950s uh, because they didn't want to see Australia with the capability. Uh, they're very keen to see uh, the, the reality in the Indo-Pacific addressed. And uh, so I, I think that they would pull out every stop to support Australia acquiring the capability as quickly as possible. And but, but two uh, subs from the US judgment. by the end of this decade? Have they, have they that, said that, that anywhere? That's... That, that, that's, that's my judgment. Uh, as I said, based I, I on made what? a statement the other day. Well, uh, based, on, based on my judgment uh, of what I thought was possible for our country. And I'd visited uh, the electric boat company in Connecticut. Uh, I'd spoken with them there. I had uh, uh, obviously looked at uh, what we could do here domestically. Uh, I, I worry that... So uh, did they tell you they could do this, China the Americans? Remains... Well, David, I'm not going into, into conversations, but I formed a judgment. Uh, that we could acquire two submarines quickly, and I think it's necessary that mm. we do so. The question this, uh, here is whether you're, you're using classified on. information to make this point. Not, I know not, you've said you haven't. No, so not at where, all. where is this publicly available information that they can provide two well, nuclear David, subs by the end of the decade? David, uh, in, the, in the article that I published in The Australian, I made it clear that I think this government is trying to crab walk away from the AUKUS deal. I don't think they are ever truly in their hearts fully supportive of it. And yeah, as you stick point with out, your, I, suspect, your uh, the Treasury, I suspect the Treasury Secretary has put before them the figures over the next 10 years and has said to them, you can either spend money on submarines or you can spend yeah. it on other programs that Labor promised at the election. That's, that's not that's, what I asked, though. The question, the question is, is where here. you got this information that you say is not classified, that the US can provide two nuclear submarines for Australia by the end of the decade? Well, David, I looked at, uh, I looked at the information which, I've, which I've, I've, I had spoken about uh, publicly before. I detailed that in, in my article to The Australian because I wanted to call out the government and stop them from making a terrible mistake of walking away from the nuclear submarines. But this and, is partly based uh, on your nothing, conversations nothing, in Connecticut, is that right? There, there's, not, there's nothing top secret uh, in, a, in, a in a professional judgment as a former Defence Minister uh, that, that I have made or as Defence Minister at the time. 
uh, not based on classified uh, information or secrets, but the, the judgment that I made. The Americans are increasing their capacity within their production line. That's publicly available. Uh, there's a lot of pressure domestically, which is publicly available, uh, from uh, Joe Courtney and others uh, in the United States who uh, have been pressuring the administration to increase their capability because of the threat in the Indo-Pacific. None of that is classified. And frankly, uh, I think it's a, it's a common sense conclusion. Uh, if the Australian government's serious about it and they push for it, I think they can achieve it. But the thought that you can develop uh, from scratch a new diesel electric submarine, which is what Richard Miles is talking about at the moment, have that as a first in, first, uh, in class in the water by 2030. Uh, is a complete joke and I actually think it's against our national interests. Let me finally turn to the Indigenous voice to Parliament. Uh, I'm really interested in your position on this. Well, firstly, what should we interpret, how should we read your decision to appoint Julian Lisa uh, as your Shadow Attorney General and Indigenous Affairs spokesperson? He is a, a well-known and strong advocate of a voice to Parliament. Well, David, I've made very clear two things. I mean, one is that uh, the government itself doesn't have the detail yet. so. We want to see that detail and there are lots of questions I'm sure that come from that the public will have. I don't think the public has uh, any understanding yet of what the government's mm. proposing. So let's see all of that detail and, uh, and, and we're not going to make a decision until we see it, which I think is a reasonable position. But the action that I want to see now, which is not a reflection of failure on the Morrison government or on the Gillard government or the Howard government, it's a collective failure of all of us. I want to see practical outcomes. I really want to see that closing of the gap. I want to see a massive reduction in the violence against women and children, particularly the sexual violence against children in Aboriginal communities. I don't want to see little kids in Indigenous communities in our country in the year 2022 locking themselves in shipping containers to get through the night to save themselves no. from being sexually assaulted. I, I, and no. that is what's happening. So, so I want to see that practical uh, effort and I hope that... Uh, I know that Anthony Albanese has outlined his four priorities so far. It doesn't include this priority. And I'd really encourage him to, to put it to the top well, of the he, list. Okay. Well, that, uh, he, he has spoken about it in his victory speech and since. Can I just check? You once called a voice to parliament a, a third chamber, as Malcolm Turnbull had, and Barnaby Joyce did too. Barnaby Joyce later acknowledged you know, he was wrong to use that term. Do you still see it as a third chamber? Well, I, I just don't know what the government's proposing at the moment, uh, other than the, the headline. And okay. this the wasn't principle. a big issue, as you know, during the course of the, during the, course of the campaign. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for, uh, to support any, anything that supports uh, reconciliation that does it in a sensible way. Uh, but I, I don't, as Linda Burney herself pointed out, she's having discussions with Anthony Albanese to decide what it is they're putting forward. So I think we're sort of 20 steps ahead in terms of what the, the opposition and, and other parties will do until the government itself knows what's it, what, what it's doing. Peter Dutton, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, David. Thank you.